So now we're transitioning to a lightning uh, talk section uh, part of the uh, event. And uh, to kick things off, uh, we're going to start with the uh, DGN who's going to talk about performance testing for Firebase, uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging Backend. Hello everyone, I'm Zijinio, software engineer at Google Firebase. Today I would like to give a lightning talk about the load testing infrastructure for the backend system of Firebase Cloud Messaging. So first, what is Firebase Cloud Messaging? It is a cross-platform messaging solution powered by Firebase. It is responsible for sending notification messages or data messages to all the Android and Chrome devices and to all the Google first-party apps on iOS devices with the support for versatile message targeting, which means that you can send message to single user, a group of user, and a subscription topics. It also supports send message from client apps. The scale of Firebase Cloud Messaging is very large. It sends over 300 billion daily messages to over 2.8 billion active users. So handling load becomes very crucial for Firebase Cloud Messaging, and that's the reason why we want a load testing infrastructure. So what is load testing? It is about generating huge traffic in pre-prod environment and provide pre-release performance signals. Good load tests are safe, automated, and tight. By safe, we are meaning the load test environment should be isolated from the production environment so that our testing traffic won't impact real production environment and affect real user. For automated, we mean that it should, the load test should run as a pre-release certification to get release without manual effort. For tight, we mean that the alerting threshold should be set tight so that we can cause the uh, any performance regression as a first as the earliest time. We also believe that investigating into false positives is preferable to setting free false negatives. What are the goals for the load testing infrastructure? Uh, first, to catch the early regression before production. This is how it runs as part of the release process. And also, we want to use it to validate the performance of new feature architect systems and architecture for the service. And in addition, we can also use the load test infrastructure for more efficient resource planning. Now let's move on to the critical parts of the FCM service. It includes two important steps, connection and messaging. For connections, this is where device establish and hold persistent connection with the server. For messaging, it, is, uh, consists, it consists of three smaller steps. First, the apps calls FCM API to send messages to users and groups. Then, the message is received by FCM and processed or rerouted to the delivery server. There can be multiple business logics here for different types of messages. And eventually, the delivery server puts the message on where to send to clients. To cover the two steps in the critical path, we designed two scenarios in our load test. The first is the connection scenario. So we generate and hold high QPS of concurrent connections to server and measure the end-to-end -end connection latency. The other is the messaging scenario. So in the setup phase, we maintain simultaneous connections from huge amount of simulated device. In execution phase, we generate high QPS of message sender requests or multicast requests, and we are marrying the latency from server receiving the request to it putting the message on where. So it's a server-side end-to-end latency. What are the challenges of load testing, especially load testing with Firebase Cloud Messaging? The first challenge is the environment. It needs to be both safe and mimic production. Another challenge is resource, because generating huge traffic from the load generator needs generous resources. This is especially the case for FCM, as it needs to maintain the huge amount of concurrent persistent connections. And on the SUT and their dependency side, we also need to do resources provisioning according to the testing goals. And in this process, it involves extensive manual tuning. Flakiness is another challenge. It is because the load test involves end-to-end -end critical paths, 
and the system and the test runs on distributed environment with shared dependencies. It's even more challenging when authentication is involved, as each request needs a unique token and we need to generate huge amount of requests. The load testing infrastructure has to manage a huge amount of authentication tokens. For the performance measurement, we are marrying the latency metrics. It's the connection latency and the message delivery latency. And we are doing threshold alerting on both of the latency. As you can see from the graph, we are setting alerting threshold of 95% within 2000 milliseconds, but from the particular run, we only get 81% of the samples within that threshold. So this particular test failed and triggered the alert to call for the developer's attention. Here we need to be cautious to set the alerting threshold to avoid that small performance issues uh, gradually aggregate into a large performance regression. The alerting threshold should be set tight compared to the typical performance of the system. We are setting the alerting threshold based on the historical performance measurement of the system within the past two weeks, so that once a small performance issue occurs, we can catch it at the first time. The load testing infrastructure is integrated into the deployment process. We add the load test workflow in release automation between dev and staging. So the dev environment will push the release candidate to a dedicated load test environment where the load tests are executed. And the staging only promotes release candidate passing the load test. So it effectively serves as a release gate to catch performance regression before production. So far, we have talked about standard load testing that is to generate huge traffic in pre-production environment and measure the performance to see if there is a performance regression. What if we want to go one step further? What if we want to see the, how the system behaves under certain intervention? For this purpose, we have introduced the latency injection features into our load testing infrastructure. It is used to temporarily inject RPC latency to system and test to simulate a dependency slowing down. One typical usage is to inject RPC latencies to all the database RPCs to simulate a database slowing down and to see how does that impact your services. To do this, we run the load test and the latency injection to database and get the measurement with the degrading dependencies. After the test, we revoke the latency injection to bring the server to its normal state. If you are interested in learning about the load testing infrastructures in more detail or if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.